So hello all, it's the Civ right here, and I'm just here with a rather cool um, multiplayer extension that I've made here. So, I don't know if you guys ever tried working with multiplayer in Game Maker. Well, you probably already realized that you can't just do online multiplayer within Game Maker by itself, so you might have found the 39 DLL, as that is probably the most popular method that people have been using for getting multiplayer into Game Maker. But, I don't know. All the tutorials out there are, are rather good, but there's a lot of tutorials, and the DLL itself is very complicated. I even made a tutorial on it, but it's it's just a really complicated DLL that, even once you master it, is still quite inconvenient to actually make good multiplayer games rather fast. So, this extension attempts to fix that. So, it is actually powered by the 39 DLL, but it it is kind of like a wrapper. So there's very few scripts that you can actually use but the amount that they do is is quite amazing so here are the scripts here in the extension and by the way this is compatible with game maker studio and game maker 8.1 those are the ones i've tested it with but it may work with even past versions up to game maker 6 for all i know but anyway um we have the net in it here and anyway okay i'll just show you what we have here the server and we have a client object so they will be representing um, the server and then the multiple different clients that you can have connected to it. I have tested this out over the internet and with several different um, clients and they're in different game files and everything. Anyway, I'll quickly show you what it does. It essentially sends over... Um, it, it, it's actually like this. You see this little circle here following my mouse. This is actually following my mouse through the internet. It is connecting using my internet IP and it is sending my mouse X and mouse Y positions and then the circle is being drawn at what is received from the server which is actually the same game file but over the internet. Anyway, so it's at a ping of 16.67 and this is just a string that I decided to send over just for demonstration purposes. So, let's show you how I did this. So, in the server object you're going to want to do just a couple easy scripts. Net init is this is the um, initializing DLL function. So you'll use this in your server and your client unless they're in the same game file as I've done here. So you only need to initialize this once in every game file, but it has to be done. So net init will initialize the DLL. So first thing you have to put in is the DLL name, like the its its location. So in my case, I've named it dll underscore 39dll.dll, and this is because in GameMaker Studio, any included files cannot start with a number. So that's why I did the dll underscore first. Anyway, uh, the next variable that you're going to want to put in here is either true or false, depending on whether or not you're using Studio. As you can see down here, it's got Studio for the description. So if you're running in studio you will set this to true. If you're not running in studio you can set this to false and this will just make sure that the way that it's loaded in because the, the way that DLLs are loaded in is different in GameMaker Studio than they have been in past GameMaker versions. So just um, be sure to set that and then you won't have any problems for different GameMaker versions. Uh, the next portion is actually the server only part which is net server start. This will start the server at the uh, port number that you put in here, 7676 is mine, but you could put in any any port that you wanted to, so that's quite easy. And then the next variable is max players. So this is your player limit, so I set this to 10. This means that I can have 10 clients connected to the server at any given time, but you could set this to 1,000, and it would be okay. <laughs> Just make sure that you can actually handle 1,000 players on your server before you do that. Anyway, uh, the next script is just creating the client. Once again, this is for testing purposes only, so you don't really need to worry about that part. So the only other part that you have to worry about on the server is this. You put in the step event, net server update, and that's it. It will literally, this, this script right here, will literally receive and send back out all packets it, it, it gets. So... Yeah, if you, if you send anything to the server, it'll automatically receive it and then send it back out again. So, literally, the server is completely painless. You don't have to worry about anything on the server, and it'll just automatically do everything. So, this is probably one of the most exciting 
parts because you used to have to, you know, on the client, you'd have to have a rather large script for sending over a variable. And then on the server, you'd have to receive the variable with a rather large script. And then another rather large script on the server to send it out again. And then on the client, again, you would have to have a rather large script to receive it. So it was very annoying. But now this kind of removes over half the work. So we go into client now. So this is um, how you will code your actual game. This is not the server. This is the game. So after you initialize the DLL, remember the net init function, you will need to connect to the client. So net client connect. Okay, that's the function you're going to want to use. And then um, you need to put in the IP in string form, by the way. Uh, so I put in the civart.ca so that uh, it'll connect to my host name. So uh, the civart.ca just simply points to my internet IP. So I can do that. Uh, but if you don't have a, a, a DNS name like this, then you can just put in your internet IP or your local IP if you don't want to use internet. But I would highly recommend the internet IP. Now you will need to port forward for your server to work. Just remember that. So if you don't know how to port forward, just Google it it's for your router because uh, it's a it's an interesting process anyway. Uh, so then here we have again the port. Uh, so you're going to want to make this the same as your server. Otherwise, you won't connect. So 7676. So net client connect um, will return true if it connected and false if it did not connect. So this is why I set a variable to net client connect and then if connected equals true then show message so <laughs> show message connected else show message could not connect so yeah this is just for mainly debugging just to make sure that you actually connected to the server so I don't know you, you, you could enable the user to input what IP it wants to connect to kind of like in Minecraft or something but um, in this case I just had it automatically connect to my server so uh, the next I just set some variables for ping testing so in this step event, first thing you're going to want to do is net client update. So this will automatically, once again, receive like, all, all packets from the server automatically. So that's, that's really handy. And then, you can, and then you can receive them in another way, and I'll show you that in a bit. But the next part here is net client send. So this is how you're going to send anything to the server. So it's, it's really is just this one short, simple function. So you have a few variables to put in here. You have the first one, which is the packet ID. So this is how um, you will identify what, what packet you're currently using. So if you're trying to get some variables, send some variables, doing whatever, checking variables, yeah, you're going to want to, you're going to want to use this ID. So I set this to one in this packet. The next variable is number. So how many variables are you trying to send over in this packet? Uh, I set this to two. The next variable, so there's only three setting variables in each packet, net integer or net string, whichever you prefer to use. So what this will be is net integer will send over numbers and net string will send over strings. So you kind of have to set that. So in this case, I set it up that with that I'm going to send a packet over with the ID of one, and there's going to be two variables, and they're going to be numbers. So then here we go: mouse x, mouse y. Those are two variables. So next thing we have, I'm also sending over uh, another packet just to show you. Uh, it is with the ID of two, and there are three variables that I'm sending over, and they are strings. So here we go: hello, my name probably should have put some more strings in there but i just put in three for now i could put in more if i wanted to i could put actually quite a few more anyway uh and then this script right here time plus equals one uh and then ping you know equals time anyway this is just attempting to calculate the ping depending on when you receive the uh, packet for the mouse x and mouse y so that's actually the next part is net client check one what this will do is this will tell you if on this step you received a packet from um, with the ID of one, so if you received a packet from the server with the ID of one, then this will equal true. If not, it'll equal false. So this is kind of how you can check if you just received a packet using this net client update function. So you'll want to recall this right after net client update, otherwise it won't work. 
So yes, that is that is pretty much all there. And then how you actually um, read these packets that you got from the server, it is this net client get right there. So what this will do is this will return the value that you got from the server. So in this case, ID. Okay, the ID is once again the ID of the packet, so you're going to want to remember that. And one is the positions that I sent over the mouse X and the mouse Y. And then the next number is the index. So which variable you want to read. So one and then two would read variable one and then two, in this case X and Y. So yeah, and then that's just where I'm drawing the circle. And then I'm drawing a text at position 1010 10 and net client get two. Uh, which is the packet ID once again, and then three is which which variable I'm trying to read. So I could set this to one, and then it'll read the other one. Anyway, and then I'm just drawing the ping at my uh, at my position from the client uh, server again. So net client get is actually reading from like a variable that will remain set. So if you don't do the net client check, you'll have no idea when you received it. So this this will like it'll keep the variable no matter when you received it. So if you only received net client get like the the one packet once, it'll still keep this value and you keep reading from it as often as you want to at any time. So that's kind of that's kind of a handy feature to have. So anyway, once again I'll just quickly show it to you. It says connected, which means we connected over the internet. And there we have hello, that string that I sent over, or actually I'm constantly sending over. And then, because I put it in the step event, and then we have the circle that is following my mouse and ping 16.67. So now the only reason this ping isn't smaller is because my room speed isn't actually large enough. So the higher you set the room speed of your game and your server, the better. Uh, but I just set it to 60, and then this is the ping I get. So yeah. I hope you guys are uh, enjoyed this. This is fully compatible with Game Maker Studio and Game Maker 8.1 and cross compatible too. Like if you make a server in Game Maker 8.1 and then try and connect to it with your client made in Game Maker Studio, it will work. However, I should note that this this, this is based on a, a DLL, so this will only work in Windows mode. You can't use it in any uh, other like you can't use it in HTML5, you can't use it in in any other uh, module yet. So, um, yeah, that's a little unfortunate, but it is still very handy to be able to do this multiplayer and being able to easily send over anything. So if you wanted to add like different clients, then you would just send over like different, uh, like more variables. And then you would include the like unique game ID or like client ID or something. Anyway, I've left that up to you for how you decide to do that. I may make a larger example later, uh, displaying the power of this of this extension here so yeah I, I don't know I, I really hope that you guys are as excited about this extension as I am I definitely will be using this all the time for any multiplayer game I ever want to make so because yeah it's just it's just that easy so I hope you guys enjoyed this and yeah I'll put the download link below good night